Take one look at social media today and you can tell that millennials are obsessed with food. They practically call themselves foodies. But many of them look at agriculture and farming as something that is uncool and not quite for them. Well, today I sit down with Frank Omondi, the head of 10 Census Africa, a leading macadamia nut producer, and I asked Frank a couple of questions on what it took for him to get here from a career in wildlife management and tourism all the way to becoming a factory mogul par none. We're here in the export processing zone, uh, the EPZ as they call it, with an amazing guy, Frank Komondi. Frank, Hi. thank you so much for taking time. I know today you were, you were babysitting. I was babysitting. <laughs> <laughs> and we pulled you out of that <laughs> to come and uh, t talk to us a little bit about your journey. Yeah, yeah. How, how, how we, how we, where are we sitting right now? You're sitting actually in my office, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a factory behind you, uh, and actually the point is, you need to have an office where you can see everything through. And we're sitting in 10 Census uh, factory for Macadamia. It's a, a very large facility we've moved into recently. Mm -hmm. uh, we have intentions to build more factories. So we're moving into cashew and also setting up uh, dried food uh, processing as well. Is this the first factory for 10 this Census? This is the first factory for 10 Census. And when you were Let's say you, 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 your, your daughter is, is how old now? Four years, kinder is four. When you were four years old, did you ever imagine that you would be working in a macadamia factory? Actually, if you, <laughs> if you asked me ten year, uh, five years ago, would I be working in a macadamia factory? I had no idea. So no. tell me how, how it was growing up. What, 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 where did you grow up? Uh, where did you go to school? How, how was your journey in the, in I, the early days? I grew up in a sugar plantation. Aha, <laughs> now, now, it, now it's starting to make yeah. sense. So, so being around so things that are great. My dad is an engineer. So he's an engineer in this factory in, 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 West, in, in, in Nyanza. Okay. And my mom was an entrepreneur. Okay. So I, I used to spend a lot of time with my mom. The days my dad wasn't coming home frequently, so mm -hmm. we had to find a way to be in business. And he was working at the sugar plantation yes, at the time? Yes, and he was working at the factory, so many times it stayed long at night in shifts. And uh, we were six of us, six, six children, and so it was difficult uh, to keep up. So we started a business with my mother. We had a little fridge in the house, mm -hmm. and our house was located next to a school, a primary school. So in the fridge, we decided making ice cools. You know, those little ah, things. Ah, yes, yes, flavor. yes. Uh, what the cools, they, they were called cools, yes, isn't cools. it? Yes, yeah. cools. So kids, come, um, kids coming from school would pass by and pick the oh, cools for one shilling. Oh, that brings back so many memories. So I then when the yeah. sports day, I would carry a bucket with my mom and all the cools inside. Well, everyone makes fun of me, but they didn't know what was in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> That's a translation. <laughs> So you started making money at so such So we started making age, cools, huh? yeah. Mm. We used to go to the uh, uh, weekends, we could go to the market with my mom and we'd make cools. Then we, my first loan we took with my mom when uh, we bought our first big deep freezer. Hold on. How old were you when you were taking a loan? I think we, I could have been in class six or something. Maybe. So you're going to school at this time? So At I night, we'd make the cools. And then because our house is next to the school, people would buy the cools. So we needed a bigger fridge. And so, so there was ART. I don't know if you can. <laughs> there was ART. So I used to give a loan. So we took a loan to buy our first fridge. And we'd pay every week. So you're going to school. So in, at night you're making cools. Yep, yep. Uh, and you're going to school like a normal kid. Yep. You're going to primary school. So at what point are you selling and doing, doing all of this other work? It's at four o'clock sports time. Me, I run home, get cools or make cools. Aha. During the market days, go to the market and come back. So it was, I think, uh, my mom taught me to be a business person. You know, I'm listening to you, Frank, and there's, there's, there's a lot, there's, too, there's almost too much that you're doing. And I, I'm, I'm curious about what is it that keeps you grounded and focused? Because, again, distractions can be so many if, you, if you're not sure of where you're going and what you want to accomplish. What are some of the things that you have that are inherent that you would say allowed you to stay focused, to run a business for 10 years, especially from campus level? That's almost unheard of. Well, I think endurance. Okay. Uh, because in a business as it begins, you can endure business, but you need to be able to stay in life and focus. Business is not easy. It's hard. It's hard work. 
it's really hard yeah, because work. I mean you know I, I, I think campus is where most people try to discover themselves they come and they're thinking okay now maybe I've been I've been living under my parents shadow for such a long time now is the time for me to release and explore and figure this world out but you you were like no now is the time to start making money and putting my dreams together how old that, like in that early 20s that's, or something yeah actually so that's it and because we formed an NGO then also for wildlife oh, for youth on. for conservation so I was a chairman of an NGO and then uh, I I remember doing a work contract for a director and I didn't know where to start. So what I did is I went to the library and looked for newspapers with adverts for a CEO's job description. And I typed all that <laughs> together and I made a contract for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I spent more time in the library for tourism where I found many management books uh, that still made a lot of difference. Well, you're obviously extremely passionate because, you know, the, the, the ability to get lost and sidetracked um, in, in, in campus is high. How, how would you say um, your, your life has progressed since that moment? Um, you know, you've graduating, running a business. How, how, do, you, how do you balance those, those sorts of uh, commitments? I think uh, Kenyan university system is very interesting. It's a lot of the workload and your ability to know what you want to do in life. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do a business. I needed to do business in tourism and and uh, I was trained for business in my life and so anything I wanted to do I always had to ask where is the business and go to it mm -hmm. and, uh, so and that obviously came from the young age when yes, you were doing your, your yes because I, I would see cash we would move from one business to the next and I would see the challenges on management especially at home when you deal with family businesses and people getting to refuse to make changes and people make changes, you have siblings and everyone else, but you have to balance through it. But what I learned most is um, you have to be focused on what you want in life. Draw a dream you've never been able to accomplish mm -hmm. and, and go f follow it. Write it, write it and follow through. So if there's a young person watching and they're, they're in campus right now and they want to go that route and become entrepreneurial, what are some of the things you would advise them? Focus. In line with your business, in campus is a lot of information. The whole reason about university mm. is it gives you an opportunity to increase your capacity. Hey, Frank, I can see where you get your energy. I want us to take a small break right now as we check out today's top tip. When we come back with Frank, I'd like to talk to him about his journey through wildlife and uh, coming into the macadamia business and being a, a factory mogul when we come back. Five ways to start off the new year right at work. One, take a risk and fail. To advance and lead, you have to take risks and seek opportunities to continuously learn. Don't let the possibility of failure hinder you from acting and increasing your knowledge and chances for success. Two, reach out to someone new. Expand your network. The more people you know, the greater the opportunities that are available to you. Acquaintances provide bridges to other networks and areas of new information. 3. Say no. Accepting opportunities can lead to new opportunities, but saying no once in a while lets people know you're not a doormat. Don't let people make decisions for you. Keep your decision-making power to yourself. 4. Break a big goal into smaller increments. Bill Gates once said, most people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. People tend to dive headfirst into a big goal. They fail, so they give up. Break your goal down into attainable increments. 5. Document your successes. Take stock of your accomplishments. Make a list of what you've done and create a forward-focused resume and online profile to highlight them. Yeah, I needed to take a break. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm here with Frank Omondi, head of uh, Ten Senses uh, Macadamia Factory. And Frank, you were, when we went on the break, we talked a little bit about your, you know, your early days and how you were running this new business, this Finch Travel. You went into government after that. Yes. How, how did that happen? Um, in 
with a tourism company, we had a, a camp in Savo, mm -hmm. a community-owned camp, 52,000 acres, it's a big piece of land with elephants. And uh, at that point, when you start working at that point, you, you meet the local members of parliament and, and different people. So there was this one day I was driving, I was zooming through, I had a Land Rover 110, just zooming through. Fantastic car. And then, yes, then, then I, we almost uh, had a head-on collision with this guy. And this guy comes out and he like, happens to be a local MP. And that's the introduction. So then we got to work together with the local projects. And we had supported um, four high schools with computers through Slovak government. We had water projects. I think we had projects in the community through our business. So, w w just a second, you, 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 you had local projects which were being supported by um, a, a, an, an external yes. government. Yes. And this was through the NGO, not through the for-profit business? Well, some came through the for-profit business. Okay. And the point is, <coughs> uh, we built this community lodge. We had c the community around us. Mm -hmm. There are challenges with elephants. And so one of the things we said, we need to have them get water. So mm -hmm. we'd go to people like KCB Foundation. Mm -hmm. Can we get a water tank? Can we put a water tank there? These guys need a computers in high school. So we put now 14 computers now available in VOI that wow. we did in 14 high schools. And we had uh, exchange program, getting students and teachers to Slovakia and back. And we have an incubation center sitting there in VOI today as a result of our business. So was Slovakia like one of your primary partners? Yes. Yeah. Um, not destinations, but that's where now you are getting a lot of tourists, would you say? Or, Not necessarily. Or, or it's just the partnership that began years ago. How did that start? Uh, well, our friend is called Alan. He's the chairman of Ten Senses. I think we've known Alan now for 10, 15 years. Okay. He's, uh, we worked with him on the tourism project as well. Mm -hmm. And he lives in Slovakia. He's Canadian, but he lives in Slovakia. He's a Canadian living in Slovakia. He speaks fluent Slovak. Okay. And um, he's the one who brought us in the link with the Slovak people, and uh, it's been amazing. And so you you finished you finished uh, with Finch. You started getting in touch with the that government. local MP uh -huh. was appointed a minister. Come on. And when he was appointed a minister, the first call he made is where is Frank. So I said, okay, this is an honor. Wonderful. And and it was a difficult decision. Do I leave my business and? Yeah, because what, you, yeah, you've, you've, you've taken 10 I was, years, blood, I was sweat going and tears. To, I was going to be his personal assistant. What it means, all the meetings, all the plannings, all the travel. And so that was a new chapter in life. So you took the job? Yeah, I took the job and left Boniface to run the business for tourism. And it must be very humbling as well because, you know, if, you, if you, you're, you're an entrepreneur, you're a businessman, obviously you're the top guy making all the decisions and you people are reporting to you. How many staff did you have at Finch, by, by, by the way? Uh, we had nine. By the time you were leaving, nine. About, about nine, nine yeah. permanent guys. So you've got all these people reporting to you, but now you are... Have you have to, to report to someone. You have to report to someone. Yes. And you know, the, to, to make that switch, and especially in such a high pressure environment like government, that there needs to be something, um, something there. Is it, a, is it an attitude thing or... What would you what would you say uh, gives you that ability to make that change? It's an attitude. You can't lead if you can't be led. Nice. And I'm thinking now, during all this time, where are you finding time to meet Madame and have a life? I Frank, was engaged sake. at that point. You were engaged. In fact, was organizing for a wedding. In that in, in that, that chaos space <laughs> and chaos. And it was this one night I remember. Mm. My mother-in-law just came in and she made dinner and she was expecting me then we get into this meeting where you're just told keep your phones in this basket so we put our phones in the basket and the basket left the room is closed and so the meeting needs to begin people are waiting for you for dinner somewhere yes now the meeting began at seven o'clock it is now one o'clock 1 a.m i can't reach my phone my uh, can you imagine my wife <laughs> my girlfriend just thinks have i been <laughs> left <laughs> so then it's 2 a.m so i get to get my phone i say i'm coming i think uh, many couples don't realize that business is a life i see if you're not ingrained into it as a couple 
Yeah, because one of the Slow things you find many couples, they struggle with being able to, to balance because you have this thing of, I expect you to be home, I expect this, I expect this, I expect this, but you're building, you're building things around, you're, you're making life work around the business. And exactly, the business. like I'm planning a trip to Da to see some farms. So I make sure they have some little holiday as I see the farms. Fantastic. You must plan it around it. And you see, it requires a very understanding uh, wife. Oh, Actually, yes. Tess is, is really the best decision that happened to me. Well, Tess, wherever you are, well done. <laughs> um, well. You've got an amazing guy. It's, uh, she, she's, she gives you room to run, the business. to run the business. She participates in it, helps you see things through yeah. it. That's quite important. And now you've, so you've worked in government and now there's this new thing that comes out of somewhere called 10 Senses. Actually, government was nice. I wish we stayed, but we lost the election. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's, a small, there's a small issue of politics. There's you know? a small issue of politics. Yeah. And so now, you know, now everyone has to change. So yeah. what happens now, um, this time when we've lost the election, and this is which one, the, twi the 2014 2013, or the 2013, yes, huh? yes, uh -huh. yes. And then now you, you're thinking, do I go back to my business? Mm -hmm. And then I meet Alan again. Alan says, Alan Ten Senses is here. We're looking for someone to run it. We are able to let you buy in shares. Is it something you'd like to do? At that time, I also had another job offer with another NGO, a big NGO in the region. Right. So I had two interviews all the same day. And guess what? I picked the one that was in debt. <laughs> really? Yeah. Why? There's this, I don't know, it's just what you are. In an entrepreneur, you want to fix things. Okay. I felt... Uh, and that was 10 cents? That was 10 cents. Okay. We, the, the decision then was either we fix it or we close. So what, so what, was the, what were the circumstances around 10 cents at the time? At that time, I think um, they needed uh, strong leadership here. And, uh, They'd been in the country for some time? 10 cents had been, now it's our 10th year. By I the time you were joining? Yes, there were five years by then. Okay. And uh, macadamia business and farming business in Kenya is a really difficult business. Where okay. you, you lose money even at the point of purchase. So they were purely focused on macadamia? Macadamia. They had, uh, the guys had, um, our staff had not been paid for six months. We had a little factory um, off near the airport. And then there was this other job where I would get to fly to the UK every two weeks. Come on, Frank. You're looking with at a brand new Land Rover. Oh, come on. They were just black and white. And you get so you gave that up to come and see you to join a business where people had not been paid for I don't know how long. Right. And uh, you <laughs> And I left government. And you've left so government. So I took a salary cut. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> was it potential what what was that? What what I drove you? I saw ten senses. I saw the women. I saw there were okay. thirty women then. Okay. In the factory and I could see the potential. Okay. I saw the team and, and I see the guys wanting to, to, to rear and I saw the, the leadership, the board was engaging and the shareholders were engaging. Mm -hmm. And we said it's time to turn this thing around. And so we... You dove in and... I didn't know anything about Macadamias then. Yeah, because where, do where, do, where does one even start? What, so tell us a little bit about the company. What does Ten Senses do? What, what, what is your MO? Ten Senses is uh, really the world's first fair trade certified macadamia producer. We are the first one. Okay. To what is certified. fair trade? What is so fair, fair trade? trade is, is a movement really to allows farmers to have the same equal footing because mm -hmm. many times farmers are taken advantage over. And so fair trade allows uh, a set of rules that brings everyone on the same level mm -hmm. where there is a minimum price set, there are contracts, and then there is a so social premium paid back to the farmer to the farmers which can help them in development and so we, what we felt at that point is we want to be a different business we want to be a, a fair business a company that treats farmers well mm -hmm. treats employees well and also provide organic products so what we do with Tencent is we work with smallholders across the country mm -hmm. uh, I think now our farmer base is nearly 30,000 farmers wow. around Mount Kenya and uh, along the Kenyan coast in Kashu the two value chains. Um, so we work with smallholder farmers who have been taken advantage of over the years. We have a middleman in between here mm -hmm. who comes and buys a product and marks it up three times and nothing goes back to the farmer in mm -hmm. training, mm -hmm. nothing goes back to the farmer in contracts or predictability. 
And so Tensus has said, we are going to go down there and get to the farmer and help the farmer see the big picture. So we buy straight from farmers. We are field officers, we train our farmers. And we use a mobile app. Okay, wow. Our own <coughs> app that we buy from farmers directly. So when you joined Ten Senses, you were you said you were at a factory uh, near the airport, yes. and um, the how, just walk me a little bit through that journey from the airport to now where we are in this amazing facility today. Lots of sweat and blood, <laughs> <laughs> which I'm sure you had been used to since the days of selling cool. I and know you, that's the point. Life, <laughs> the, 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 the earlier businesses and experiences prepared me. Right. And I felt uh, I never knew anything about food processing. Remember, I'm a wildlife biologist. Correct. I know more about elephants. Right. I can tell you, I can speak to an elephant, and we communicate. And apparently, when you deal with human beings who can speak back, it's now a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> it helps. <laughs> yeah. So we, we got these people, we renegotiated loans, um, got uh, certifications, and uh, assembled a team together went to the farmers, put together a system and a process for buying, mm -hmm. uh, renegotiated with my shareholders to ensure that we can uh, raise more capital and get the business to move forward. Because the difference between then and now, we had, um, I think, um, 30 employees. Yes. Now Mostly our, women, huh? Yes. Now mm -hmm. we are nearly 600. So it's been a very interesting gradual increase. Um, we used to sell one container the whole year. Now we have capacity in this place to do five to nine containers a month. Wow. And, and we increase our revenues over the years and uh, it's been amazing to see that move. And what, so how did you know, at what point did you get to the, to the EPZ? Because um, I, I, it would be interesting for other entrepreneurs watching to find out, you know, if you want to take advantage of, of this space, um, there are certain things that you need to do, certain things you need to comply with. Talk to me a little bit about moving to the export processing zone. Uh, we are purely an export business. Okay. And so what, what we, people don't know is the advantages the government has set okay. for many companies in this kind of space. For example, uh, entrepreneurs must realize the EPZ has incubation centers. So you can come in and, and, and give your workspace if you're an export and they give you really um, very uh, very good terms. Mm -hmm. So this place allows us to have a tax holiday for 10 years. Okay, wow. And we, uh, we also are able not to pay VAT for, for input. And also it provides us uh, their building. So we've saved money. This building is government building. We've saved two and a half million dollars. We'd have put in a building. So you'd use it instead to build your business. Uh, the many things. But what I learn is you must keep learning. I've been through different uh, schemes. There's the Stanford Seed. seed, yes, of yes. course, yes. We are, we are an, I'm an alumnus of, of Stanford Seed, and there was also Synapis Fast Track fellow, Fellowship, which allowed us as a business to learn. So I think as a business person, you keep learning, you learn more about uh, opportunities like EPZ, and now I'm learning a lot more about tax. Yes. That I didn't ever think learn about employment law. Those are things you must just have time to learn. So the opportunity is there but you have to make effort to learn so if i'm if i'm a young person now um and uh, maybe i don't have the connections with slovakian government and, uh, and 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 similar other connections like in government and i would and i'm running an export business i have products that i'm i'm manufacturing and i'm trying to get them uh, across borders and i want to come into the epz what are some of the things that i need to, to do what you'd like to do at that point is you well you can come to the export processing uh, zone and mm -hmm. also we can go to the um, EPC I think export promotions council okay they give you a lot of tips on how you can take advantage of the promotions they have excellent but as a person uh, getting into export business it's a very nice business but difficult as well mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, with a strong shilling yeah, what are some of the challenges? If, a strong if, shilling yeah. is not very good for exports. A strong shilling, a strong currency is good for uh, um, countries where there's efficiency. Mm -hmm. But with this level of operations, it's... It's funny because many people out there are, are thinking oh, that we want the shilling to strengthen so that we can, you know, have... Co purchasing shilling power. helps you to buy yes. imports. Yes. And, uh, and uh, the, so the sorry thing is when you see the SGR coming back mm -hmm. from Mombasa full of containers, and when it's going, it has less. 
Uh-huh. We That's need that to fix that balance of trade. Excellent. Okay. We have amazing things in this country we can do in agribusiness. Mm -hmm. Macadamia is one of them. Coffee, I am, I am surprised as a country when we, we have to more. cut down our coffee trees to build beautiful houses yeah. which need mortgage and mortgage needs to be paid from a job. I really don't understand it. I'm with you. So we need to take advantage of those opportunities. And as a young person, farming is amazing. Macadamia trees, for example, these are trees, there's less work. You yes. plant it and it's a pension tree. So I think you must front load as a young person, invest for the future. Don't see life now and you have, use what you have. Everyone has something. I like that. Everyone has something with them. Either your degree, your school, your home, there's land at home. Use it. Use it. You have something you can use. Plans for the future? I'm getting tired of driving. <laughs> I can imagine all the how many how many how many how much driving have you done now in this I think in this, job? this year I've done this year I've done 56,000 kilometers. Oh, what? Yeah, it's we were just in Ethiopia the other day Tanzania to the end of it. So I think I'm learning I'm, I need new challenges and okay. we need to grow the business. So my next plan is to get a new factory in mm -hmm. Kilifi. Mm -hmm. And also, the next thing we want to do is to set up a, a dried fruit facility in okay. Western Kenya. We're already working with pineapple farmers there. Again, we want to drive our seedlings business. So we're looking for people who want to partner with us with large-scale farms, and we can also be able to help them uh, uh, do business into JV arrangements. It's exciting for us. So the next phase is... Um, it's looking good. Very good. Well, I, I can tell you for a fact that uh, under your leadership and with your energy and your drive, I think you'll accomplish all of those things and more. I'm very lucky. I have a very good board. So your support system, your board? My board mm -hmm. shareholders are very supportive. And they've given us room to, to run this business. Yeah. And that's something very rare. Most people don't get that opportunity. And so I tell you, people buy you. Uh -huh. People it's give money to <coughs> people. I mean, money has got to come from someone to give it to someone. And right. so that someone is what they are buying into. Did you hear that, guys? People buy you. It's about you. Make sure that you are putting the best version of yourself out there and that you are the one who is, you know, giving people the confidence to invest in you. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you so, so much, Frank. Uh, if it's okay, I would yeah. like to check out what you've got going on here. I was I've yeah. been very curious. You know, I've been looking at uh, this. Uh, this is the, this is my first time in this kind of a factory. Okay. So it, would it be okay if I? My pleasure. I'll yeah. Walk you around and show you our container. Oh, it's a season of handshakes. <laughs> <laughs> Asante, Sana Frank. Eh? Thank you very much. Yeah. So we can uh, have a look. Yes, let's go have a look. Asante. Well, that was certainly a deliciously inspiring story. Thank you so much for watching Top Job with me, Munesi Musalia. Remember. It's all about power moves only. I've always, whatever I've been given, I've always done it with a lot of diligence. And I remember one particular event um, or one particular uh, responsibility that I was entrusted with, mm -hmm. which was quite a lot. And I actually, I had to, and it, it did come as a test.